1. When I worked as a restaurant manager and later as an IT support tech for a business that rhymes with calamari retorts, I had the pleasure of meeting several outstandingly difficult individuals, two of which spring immediately to mind. The first was a gentleman that approached me when I was still in training. My restaurant had a coffee shop attached to it, and I was assisting the staff during a rush. A man approached and demanded his food, which was not done because it takes more than 2.5 seconds to make actual food. I explained this to him, and he took it like a champion, throwing an ugly adult tantrum and calling me a lazy fat fuck. I kindly asked him to leave the outlet and not return, and if he had any issues to refer to the front desk. He mutters and storms off. I get back to making drinks for a moment until the hostess comes and finds me, saying there is a guest that would like to speak to the restaurant manager. I cannot describe the sheer satisfaction I felt walking out the door behind the hostess to see this self-important prick wilt under my gaze when I told him that I was the manager that day. He just walked away. By far the winner, however, was the waiting for Superman woman. This genius decided it was a great idea to send her seven and nine year old by themselves on a property with thousands of strangers to the breakfast buffet. I had my server sit the kids and give them some water and crayons, but told them they had to wait for their parent before they could eat. 45 minutes later she arrives, and boy she pissed. How dare we not allow her perfect little angels to eat? How dare we not allow children to scoop food off of a scalding hot buffet that is taller than they are? Do we not know that they are underschoolers and therefore are special? She berates me and anyone who is close enough for a solid half hour before finally getting her kids their goddamn breakfast. This is where she takes a sharp left, friends. For the next two hours she monopolizes my time, lecturing me about how it's not my fault the public school system failed me or that I was not intelligent enough to allow her beautiful angels to grace us with their presence, and if I can only watch one movie ever again it should be waiting for Superman, so I can see and understand how my life is such a failure, and how it is not my fault I'm stupid. I'm college educated at this time by the way, not in hospitality but in computer science. I finally get this woman off my tit and back to running my restaurant, and the front desk calls. We have a guest complaining. Would I like to come assist since it involved my outlet? <sighs> yes. So I get there. And it is the same damn woman! Now the front desk manager and I are getting unloaded on by this woman, same basic lecture. I'm feeling bad for her kids at this point. How would you like to go to one of the coolest water parks on earth and spend your entire time listening to your mom be Karen? finally get her to leave us alone. Following up the next day, she had gotten herself evicted from the property. Apparently, she was not satisfied with lecturing us, got the extension for the guest services director's extension, and blew up his phone the entire night with crazy rambling shit. He took one listen the next morning and was like, GTFO. 2. I started as a hostess and busser and then moved to serving, but I would still get scheduled to host or bus occasionally. This particular day I was scheduled to serve. It was a Saturday morning so we were slammed and the two bussers we had scheduled both called out. My boss asked me to cover and another server came in. It was just me to seat, cash out, clean tables, set tables and take and prepare to go orders. It was packed and we had a 45 minute wait. People were everywhere and I was busting ass. Now usually the servers are supposed to tip out 10%. Normally this would be split between the hostess and bussers but today it was just me so I was very excited to get all of it. I should note that I always tipped out the correct amount when I was the one serving. My co-workers could care less and would just throw a few dollars to the bussers. So I've been busting ass since 6am. My shift is supposed to end at 2 and almost time to go. It's me bussing and hosting and then 5 servers. I'm the only young person I was 18 working and my co-workers were all 30 plus. They all hate their lives and would try to make you hate yours too. I just showed up and did my job, didn't really engage with them. I was always reliable and on time. 
So it's like 1.45 and my manager asks me to do a double because guess what? The other busser that was supposed to come in for evening shift called out. So knowing I would make bank if I stayed, I said yes. I needed the money, especially because I didn't end up serving in the AM shift. I never showed up for the evening shift. So my manager says she's going to step out for lunch. And I can too for an hour and then come back for dinner. I finish the morning shift cleaning and wait for the servers to finish up so I can get tipped out before shift changes and I can go get lunch. Ten minutes go by and only one server had tipped me out. $3.50 when I was the one that cashed her in and I know she made over $200. That's fine. Sometimes they're busy with tables or they forget. I really wanted to get out of there so I could eat before starting my next shift. I nudge one of the female servers and let her know I'm about to leave if she gets a chance, hint, hint. She just kind of glanced at me and went, uh-huh, before walking off to fill a drink. So I wait. Now it's been over 20 minutes and I just want to go eat. I grab another server on her way to the bathroom and this is where it all went to shit. Hey, I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm trying to get out of here because I have to do a double. Would you mind tipping me out? I don't think I plan on tipping you anything. None of us do. I'm sorry? Did you not make a lot today? I thought your section was pretty filled up. It's not that. You just didn't do anything to deserve a tip. Excuse me? I'm the only one here. Sorry if I didn't specifically cater to your tables, but I busted ass today to make sure they were sat and clean, and I even refilled drinks for several of your tables. Honestly, we shouldn't have to tip you anyway because you're only a teenager and you don't need it. I have kids to feed. First of all, I have a wedding to pay for. Second, it doesn't matter what you think. You don't own the place, so follow the rules and tip me out. I was properly pissed at this point. And if you really need money for your kids, maybe you should get a second job, instead of blowing your tips at Drinky Drinky's local bar every night of the week. She regularly would tell us she was drunk at work and her kids live with their grandparents. Ha! <laughs> You're fucking crazy. I refuse. I'll be tipping the manager because she actually helped me, not you, you little bitch. You think you're so good, don't you? By this point, my other co-workers had gathered around. Okay, then. Here, hands her my apron. You can let the manager know why her most reliable employee isn't coming in for evening shift. She just looked at me all pissed off, but I was petty. I walked into her section and told her last table, regulars, that their server doesn't deserve a tip because she likes to call names and doesn't tip out the bussers. Oh, and I'm quitting at the moment because of her. Please tell her I said that I hope she goes to hell. They were super pissed. They liked me a lot and actually wanted to sit in my section, but of course I wasn't serving that day. I don't know what happened after that, but I'm way better off now. It's just crazy that not only one but four people decided to not tip out. Life is too short to deal with that environment 40 hours a week. I actually went back there a week later just to grab my check. My manager apologized and begged me to come back, but of course I said no. The cook gave me a slow clap. She was very cool. 3. I work at a dive bar type place in the south. We have two sides, a bar side and a restaurant side. Bar side is completely closed off from the restaurant side, cause smoking is allowed on the bar side, but not the restaurant side. This usually means I don't get many tables when I'm on shift, except for poker nights. On poker nights, a ton of people come in, get drunk, and play poker for house cash. Poker shifts are the shifts where I make 300 bucks or more from tips, because of alcohol sales and the random one or two tables that come in during poker, but don't end up playing. On this particular poker shift, I had been at the place since 10am. Trust me, it's important. Well, I was wrapping up poker at around 10.30pm, when a table comes in. Being a young couple. Weird place for a date, but alright. So I get them seated, take their orders, and go back to closing poker down. About 15 minutes later, my worst nightmare comes in. To put my sense of dread into perspective, I'm usually gone by 11, 11.15 on poker nights mainly because the majority of players are elderly and just want to go home by then. Except, you know who has no problem with just staying as long as they feel like? A group of five middle-aged women who just finished their wine and paint class, and only thirst for more alcohol in moderate serving sizes. The only experience I've had with such a person would be my mom, when she did the same class. And I don't think, get out of my room, you're sloshed, 
is going to work this time. So I walk up, drop menus off, and take their drink orders. It took a while because one wouldn't stop complaining about how we couldn't make martinis at the time, but she got over it and ended up getting a nice IPA. One comment on how good my butt looks in jeans later and I'm bringing out five beers to this table who are pretty loud, and clearly disturbing our awkward little couple who are seated just a few spots away. Hi, future Gecko League here. I should add the restaurant side closes at 11. Date table came in at 10.30 and the ma'am, middle-aged mom table, came in at 10.45ish. Fast forward an hour and a half and it's 12am, both tables are still here. Alcohol has only fueled the MMMC, middle-aged mom cackle, you know the one, and my patience is running thin. Both tables have their checks. Mom mashup ran five separate checks and our date seems to have held strong because they're taking one check. Except one issue. I dropped those checks off 30 minutes ago. They've paid their tab, but now I'm forced to sit here and wait till they decide they're gonna write the tip down and leave. To kinda put the pressure on, I start visiting the tables more often. Go to the date table and get the stink eye from the guy with a warm smile from the girl. Yikes, cause the guy is the one paying. Ma'am table is up next, no signed checks, beer is half empty, and more unneeded comments on my ass. Can't lie, the comments made me have more patience with them because they were obviously in good fun, and nobody at that table seriously wanted to touch the cheeks. Then finally, I see pen movement from the date table. Halfway to leaving now, I casually stroll over, ask if everything is okay after receiving the standard glare and smile, and take the check. $3 on a $45 order. At this point, I don't really care because of both poker and the fact that I want to leave. Plug in the tip. Close out the till, shed tears of joy. That is until I remember I still have five mams to deal with. Damn it! Head over to the table, and I'm greeted with five signed and tipped checks, and... We know we're obnoxious, but thank you for putting up with that. Apparently they noticed how anxious I was to leave upon grabbing the other table's check, and figured it was late as hell, and they were probably holding me at the store with their check. Doesn't win anyone a detective badge, but I appreciated the gesture. So I closed out all five checks, returned the cards, checked out, and went home to sleep. And God damn it, if that wasn't the best sleep I've had after a 14-hour day. 4. So I work at this high-end cocktail bar in Europe as the head bartender. The only method of payment is every kind of debit or credit card, no cash. It's written all over the place and in every menu that we do not accept cash. If someone genuinely has forgotten his or her card, they can pay me the exact amount in cash. I just use my card, no problem, and most of the time I get a tip out of it. Which isn't common over here. Anyway, in comes these two guys and they take a seat at the bar right in front of one of the signs. I didn't really interact with them that much, since it was a weekend night and my incapable piece of soggy bread for brains manager put me on shift with two waiters for maybe a capacity of 40 people, including bar and one bartender, me. So they had to take orders at the bar as well. I was just too busy. Mind that the cocktail garnishes etc are quite more than just a lemon twist. So you're basically like your Aunt Karen making a liquid scrapbook. Anyway, all goes well. They have a couple of drinks and start to get a bit tipsy. But before it escalates, they want to pay, so my ever-so-sweet waitress hands them the bill and pulls out the credit card thing. And then, of course, it starts. They wanted to pay with cash, but in a very rude way. Like slapping the cash on the counter, so of course my co-worker didn't feel like saving their ass. And asked for a credit card. But we don't have any credit cards. Mind that they didn't say this nicely. They said it with the biggest shit-eating grins possible. My colleague was totally flustered, so I came to the dream team of ignorant, shit-stained fuckers trying to scam us. By this time, Dickhead 2 had already left the building, so Dickhead 1 had to deal with it and probably try to get out ASAP too. So, gentlemen, what's the problem? I can't pay. I have no card on me. Shit-eating grin so bad he probably still has diarrhea behind the ears. Sir, I find it hard to believe that in this day and age, neither you and your friend have any cards on you. Ah! Huh. What are you going to do about it? Call the cops. The station is, like, in this very street. You can't do that! 
Dude, it's written everywhere that you can only pay by card. Either you pay or you call a friend to come over and pay for you. I'm not letting you out. The guy starts walking to the door. I hurry over and stand between him and the door. Me being the size of a pinky toe and he's like, huge. But by this time I probably have some crazy cat lady glare in my eyes. It was a really shitty night as well. Okay, listen up. Calling the police only takes three digits. Your credit card code will take four. Let's see who's faster. Guess who magically was able to pull out several credit cards? Five. I work at a decently popular country restaurant chain. And Saturday nights are disgustingly popular for date nights. I was bussing down two of my tables when I got sat again. A couple who insisted on us lighting the oil lamp on the table for them. No problem. I went to tell them I'd be right with them, and if they knew what they wanted to drink, I'd bring it out on the way back. The woman didn't even look me in the eye, just said, Sweet tea, no lemon, and I want biscuits now. I smiled and said no problem, and asked the man what he'd have to drink, and he said, Diet Dr. Pepper if you have it, but if not, could I have a Diet Coke please? I said absolutely, and the woman rolled her eyes and kind of huffed. I thought nothing of it and just grabbed my trays to take to the dish room and get their drinks and biscuits. Unfortunately for me, biscuits were on a 10 minute wait, but naively I thought, okay, just 10 minutes, it'll be out before their meal, surely it won't be a big issue. And I took out their drinks. Immediately, as I'm setting her tea down, she finally makes eye contact with me to ask where her biscuits are. I apologize and explain that we have a 10 minute wait, but I can guarantee they'll be out before her meal. She's getting visibly angry. Seeing this, the man speaks up and tells me it's fine, not to stress out about a couple of biscuits, and just asks to make sure whenever they come out to bring a couple. This makes her even angrier, as she starts complaining that it would be easier to know what she wanted to eat if she had biscuits while she looked over the menu. I get their orders down with relative success, but he asked a question regarding the pancakes he was ordering. Would the chocolate chips be mixed into the batter, or just put on the grill while the batter is put on top of it? And she snapped. Why can't you just stop flirting with her and order your food so we can have our date? I took this as my cue to go put in their order, check on the biscuits, and go greet my other table. I notice as I bring out the biscuits that they're now arguing, and I foolishly, trademark, thought bringing the biscuits would help distract them. As soon as I set down the plate, it starts. It's about time. I'm surprised they aren't cold. They probably would have come out a lot faster if you hadn't been hitting on him in front of his girlfriend. He looks extremely angry. Thanks me for getting the biscuits out and asks if there's any way to get their food to go. I say absolutely. I'll go tell the cooks and they'll put everything in boxes for them. As I'm walking away, she starts flat out screaming at him things like, I can't believe you let her ruin our date. You better not tip her, so help me God. And my personal favorite, You need to ask someone else to bring the food out. I don't want to see her again. My co-workers, drama-hungry fools with hearts of gold, are living for this, and keep trying to find reasons to go out and listen to everything. I go out and bring their check and food, thank them for coming in, and tell them I hope they have a great night. She scoffs and throws the empty biscuit plate at my feet. Unfortunately, either her aim was wildly off, or I'm really stupid and just hopeful that she was aiming for my feet because it hits my shin, crashes, and breaks on my feet. At this point, my co-worker saw what happened, helped me get back to the manager and tells him everything that happened. He goes out to talk to the woman and tells her that she won't be welcome next time she comes in. Her response, whatever, the biscuits here are dry. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates number 33. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Okay, right. I shouldn't jinx this by talks talking about it, but I think this is a weekend. I think this is a weekend. I finally got my bedroom decorated. The, the wallpaper is currently exactly half-stripped. Yeah, it was a slightly under before, but it was exactly half-stripped. So I'll get that done on Saturday, and then if I'm feeling up to it, which I should be, because I plan on when these videos are done, sleep, 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 and uh, I'll maybe crawl out of bed to get a snack or two, but uh, then come Saturday, uh, get the rest of that done. And the room is tidy. Sounds weird to tidy a room before you make a mess, but you know, you've got to move things about and all. 
Uh, so the room is tidy enough that I can move things about. I'll have to get the vacuum cleaner in behind things that doesn't always get vacuumed. You know how that is. Uh, then I can get the wallpaper up. Then I can do the fun part. And, you know, I, I can pick, like, uh, various knickknacks and things and, and pictures to go on walls uh, to make the room more cosy. I'm debating on whether or not I should uh, get rid of... I don't want to get rid of it because it still works. Uh, my old TV, which I bought when I was, like, uh, 18 or 19. It's an old terrestrial TV, a JVC. It hasn't been on in years. I should probably turn it to make sure it still works. Um... So I'm not sure if I should get rid of it or not. Uh, I'm going to have to get a mirror from somewhere, I think, because I did have a mirror on the wall, uh, but that was kind of repurposed from the back of uh, the back of an old um, an old dressing table. You know, you had the mirrors that attached to the back. Uh, well, my family used to have one, and they were, they were going to check out. I thought, well, can I cut the mirror off and just mount it on the wall? Which is what I did, and it was there for many years, and it was very useful for many years. Uh, but that's gone away now, because it doesn't really fit... Um, well, that's not really fit. It doesn't really fit the aesthetic I'm going for because I'm so f- sophisticated and all that. Uh, but yeah, I just want something a bit fancier. So that's going. That's down. That's going to get taken away whenever I call the the people that take things away to come do that. Um, and uh, so I'm debating on that. I'll need to get another mirror. I do have one, but I don't really want to put that. I don't really want to put that up in the bedroom. So I might actually just get a standing mirror or something, because that'd be quite good if I'm, you know, if, I, if I'm up in the middle of the night and. I'll walk into the bedroom and the reflection makes it look like there's somebody already in my room. That, that'd be handy. Uh, anyway, okay, I'm, I'm going to go now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourselves.